Welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast, where we talk to C-level leaders from across the payments landscape. We'll be discussing the products and services that impact the payment space today, as well as trends and predictions for the future of payments. We will also hear stories from our guests about their journeys to the top. There's so much opportunity that's still untapped and in so many ways that we can look at making really creating really positive change for good in the financial technology space. I mean, I think you just need to pick an angle, right? If you look at that unbanked population, it's so huge. And you look into their lifestyle and how things could change if they had easier or earlier access to money, if they had more financial education. We focus a lot on the fact that Financial education and training on how to do simple things like create a budget and understand what your expenses are, that needs to start when you're in school. That was Jeannie Walden, the Chief Innovation Marketing Officer at Daily Pay, and she is my special guest on this episode as we continue our focus on financial inclusion. For those of you who are curious about why we typically have to wait two weeks to receive money that we've already earned, this podcast is for you. Jeannie talks with us about financial inclusion, breaking the invisible barriers around our financial system, and what it looks like to have immediate access to your earned wages. Daily Pay is focused on changing pay for good. Their objective is to look at the ways they can create new solutions that have a positive impact on the entire financial system. Their target audience is the employer the employee, and everyone in between. And their mission is to bring more transparency into the system to help generate more financial confidence as a result. Jeannie and I go on to talk about the invisible barriers preventing us from financial inclusion, what the average household looks like in a post-COVID high inflation economy, and what more our global financial system could commit to in an effort to strengthen financial inclusion. We've got a great episode ahead, so let's get started. Hi, Jeannie. Thank you for being here and welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast. And more specifically, welcome to this special episode about financial inclusion. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm so excited to be here. Great. So let's dive right in. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself, maybe your background and your role at Daily Pay. Well, I've got a crazy background that's a whole podcast in itself. So I'll just say it's pretty diverse. I've built about five different businesses, worked in advertising, marketing, My education is as a teacher, but I've been a CMO for the last 25 years. And that's my role at Daily Pay is I'm the chief innovation and marketing officer, which means I'm always looking at ways that the company can create new solutions that have a really positive impact on the entire financial system. Okay. Well, let's dive in and talk about Daily Pay. Tell our audience what Daily Pay does. Sure. Daily Pay is a company that's focused on what we call changing pay for good. And what that means is we really feel that the financial system as it runs today has a lot of opportunities to work better for both the employer and the employee. Because there's been all of these invisible rules around money that we've created as barriers for ourselves over the years. For example, Why do you have to wait two weeks to get paid? Why can't it be every day? That was a rule that was created generally to help companies process payroll taxes a lot more efficiently when they were first introduced in the 1940s. With technology solutions today, we don't really need that invisible rule anymore. So what we like to do is take a look at the way money moves through the entire financial system and find different points where we can suggest adjustments, leverage technology to make improvements, and create an easier flow so that every one of us that are working can make money work for us the minute that we start working. Okay. And just for my own clarification, do all the terms we hear, earned wage access, early wage access, like all of those kind of terms, do they all mean the same thing or are there differences in some of those terms? I'm so glad you asked that. Absolutely not. They're very different. And, you know, I've got to say, as a chief marketing officer that's focused on building brands and establishing education about what we do for the entire industry, It's great when something 
means so much to businesses and to workers that other companies start to riff off of it. And I think that's what we're seeing today. So earned wage access is exactly what it sounds like. Once you've earned your wages, you can have access to them. Daily pay makes that availability instant. So if you work a shift, as soon as the shift is over, you can use those funds to pay a bill, to avoid a late fee, whatever you need them for. Early wage access, which is a brilliant marketing steal from whoever created it because it uses the same letters, EWA in short, is not money that's been earned necessarily. It's about getting money earlier than you normally would, but not the minute that you've earned it. So you see a lot of banks, I think Chase just announced it recently, that they're offering your pay two days early. Neobanks like Chime offer EWA, early wage access, but they're very different. I mean, effectively, early wage access just turns a Friday payday into a Wednesday payday, but you're still waiting that same time period, one week, two weeks, a month. Earned wage access means you've earned the wages, you can access them as soon as you've earned them. Okay. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that because I I think a lot of people probably are confused because if you don't slow down and think about the differences in those terms, they are absolutely not the same thing. So how does earned wage access and the ability to control the timing of your pay, how does that impact the entire financial system? You know, it starts at the very beginning. When a company is processing elements of payroll. You know, they're they're approving a timesheet. I mean, that that's really where earned wage access starts to make changes. Because when you approve someone's timesheet, 37% of the time is a stat that I heard. It's not a daily pay stat. There are errors. You put the wrong hours in, you forgot to include something, you use the wrong shift differential. The daily pay solution allows the technology to identify if there's an discrepancy in the timesheet that was approved and what typically gets approved for a person. So right there, you're proactively stopping any payroll errors from happening, which is huge because if 37% of the time there are payroll errors in your payroll, then that means it's a lot of legwork, a lot of people time at your company to reprocess that. A lot of employees get upset when their pay is wrong, rightly so. You want to avoid those if possible. So it starts the minute that the timesheet is submitted. Then it moves into when that person in payroll presses the button to submit payroll into the system to take the 48 hours to go through the Fed and be processed so it can reach everybody's bank account. Once that button is pressed, the person in payroll cannot make any changes. So if you did forget something, you have to wait until the pay comes out before you can make an adjusted payroll, an adjusted pay statement, an adjusted anything. And in many cases, that causes issues with the employer. Sometimes there's tax. Sometimes there are different fees that companies have to pay if something was processed incorrectly. It causes issues with the employee. They're unhappy. They were expecting different money. It can put them behind on their bills. So daily pay allows companies to avoid that because things happen in real time. Once the money is received at the bank, then it's up to the employee to use that money. Unless you are underbanked, or unbanked completely, in which case you're stuck with a paper check or possibly having money put on a pay card that could have fees associated with using that money when you try and get it off. So daily pay comes in for the bridge between the employer and the employee. When the money reaches the bank, at the very last point, we're allowing people to access their money any way they want to. So whether you are banked unbanked or underbanked, the money's available in your daily pay app and you can move it wherever you want to, including using our general purpose reloadable card Friday that we've just come out with recently. So if you don't have a card and you want to put money on a card and you know go out to lunch and use your card to pay, you can do that. So we affect access and availability to money for businesses, at the banking level, and then also for the employee. And this comes in handy significantly. But I think the most powerful thing that we do 
is we are bringing transparency to the employee on the money they're making as they make it early enough that it gives them the ability to make changes to the way that they work. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you know three days into your work week, you've worked X number of shifts, you've worked for X number of hours, you've made Y dollars, and you can see that dollar amount and it's $1,600 $1,600 and 53 cents, you'll know three days into your week, is that enough to pay my bills or not? Maybe something unexpected came up that you had to cover. Maybe you're just looking to start saving for a vacation, but you can make some really important choices about your financial future based on having that data. You can choose to pick up additional shifts. You can choose to make the decision that you've made enough. You can afford to take a vacation day. You might even go and pick up some gig work on the side if your company doesn't have additional shifts available. And in many cases, just having that information and that transparency enables people to start to build a financial level of confidence they haven't had in the past. And that really helps people to build back up, to get out of debt, to start saving for the future, and to just start being able to manage their finances in a much more effective way. So. The benefit is for everybody, even down to the local merchant in your community. Because if you can access your pay as you need it, instead of the local store, assuming they're going to receive a lot of you know shoppers on a Friday when it's payday, they're getting shoppers on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. When people are shopping early, they're creating a trickle-up economy effect that's allowing the store to get funds faster, which means they can stock their shelves faster and they can hire faster. So it really helps everybody in the process. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned some things in there that we often hear when we're talking about financial inclusion, which of course, October is financial inclusion month. And part of, I think the challenge of the underserved, the unbanked, the underbanked is that sometimes they have to resort to payday loans or other uh, non-beneficial to their financial situation types of activities in order to just make ends meet. So I think companies have come along and started to offer the earned wage access program as a way to promote financial inclusion and, and I guess financial well-being as a broader term. So can you talk a little bit about how businesses are doing that? Oh, absolutely. You know, look, earned wage access and what we do at Daily Pay is one piece of the financial inclusion puzzle. And it's great to have an entire month dedicated to it because it's desperately needed. You know, more visibility about financial information, more training about how to plan finances and understand them so that you can avoid payday loans and get out in front of challenges, but also an understanding of what options are available for you when you run into an unexpected issue. And I think what Daily Pay does, what the Earn Wage Access category does, is it allows businesses, in Daily Pay's case, at no cost to the company, to offer their employees, what I said earlier, this level of financial transparency that they've never had before. You know, the most commonly used feature on our Daily Pay app is the daily pay balance. And we see people checking their daily pay balance, how much money they've earned to date, more times than they check their bank account on a weekly basis. It makes sense to us because nobody wants to check their checking account as it continues to dwindle down. But everybody likes to check their daily pay account when they see that there's more and more money in there as you get closer to payday. And that transparency is the first time that hourly workers have been able to see the actual dollar amount that they've earned at any point in time. So that then opens up an opportunity for companies to do a lot of financial education. And while we have a lot of capabilities in our app to help people start creating a budget, businesses are creating just really great solutions, really great training programs about financial literacy. You know, our partner at Visa creates a comic book that they send out into the schools because they know it'll make it home to the parents about financial literacy. And it takes an effort from all of us to create that level of financial viability and financial inclusion. And then on top of that, you know, a lot of the information that we share about usage with the companies that offer daily pay to their employees allows the business to create smarter financial types of programs and decisions in the future. And I'll give you a great example. 
one company that we work with, a lot of their salaried employees use daily pay. And we were giving them information about our savings feature and saying, hey, great news. Here's all these employees that are saving money as soon as they earn it using daily pay. And the business took a look at the data, you know, in aggregate numbers, not necessarily proprietary information. And they said, wow, that's amazing because we have a very low percentage of engagement in our 401k program. And our 401k program has a match. So they were able to sit down with their employees and say, hey, look, if you're saving on daily pay, that's great. But if you put half of your money in daily pay, so it's liquid, and the other half in this 401k, we're going to match it. And that increases the amount you've saved by 50% automatically. And a lot of people didn't realize how 401k worked or how they could use it. So it's those types of inclusion and just transparency around financial information initiatives that really help to change just, you know, all of our lives for the better and then create that sense of education that can get shared with, you know, our friends and our family and our communities. Yeah, and you've mentioned shift work, you've mentioned hourly, you've mentioned salaried workers. Are there certain types of businesses or or verticals as a, a term we like to use in payments? Are there are there verticals that this seems to be a better match for? Or is it kind of like any employee these days could leverage this type of solution? Well given the economic state that we're all living in, I think all <laughs> of us can use this at this point. I think a, a recent study came out from CNBC saying that the average person making or household making $250,000 a year is living paycheck to paycheck. So that's a pretty dark statement to put out there. And when you relate that to, you know, what earned wage access as a category offers, my answer is it can be used for everybody. But, you know, if I go back a while to when the world wasn't in such a crazy financial state of turmoil, you know, there's there's really interesting aspects about earned wage access that people don't necessarily consider. So you absolutely have hourly workers that are that do have a higher percentage of people living paycheck to paycheck that are a phenomenal group to share daily pay and earned wage access with because it really helps them get on the right path. But in addition to that, you've got a whole other group of what I call proactive users that don't necessarily need to avoid a payday loan or take care of an unexpected expense to avoid a late fee, but they're looking to improve their financial status by doing things like using their pay earlier to accelerate training to get to either the next level in their job, to get to that next pay level that they should be receiving. We see that happen a lot. Anytime that there's an employee that gets accreditation for things like nursing accreditation, where once you've received X hours, your pay goes up to Y. We also see people use it to educate themselves to get ready to work in a new industry. And we see that positive proactive usage. We also see proactive usage by people who want to reduce their credit card debt to increase their credit score so that they can get a better rate when they're looking to refinance their house, take out a home equity loan, or purchase a new car. So there's a lot of really interesting proactive usage with a daily pay or wage access solution, as well as just the paycheck to paycheck. But right now, I think the entire world's almost living paycheck to paycheck. So we can all benefit from it. Yeah, absolutely. And you you sort of answered this, but I want to maybe go a step deeper. The underserved and the unbanked, you know, how are they able to use the earned wage access program to stay out of debt? Yeah. So if you're unbanked, obviously you don't have a bank account for a variety of reasons. With our general purpose reloadable card Friday, it gives you a card. That's exactly what I just said. It's a general purpose reloadable card. So you don't need a bank account. It doesn't matter what your credit looks like. You move the money onto the Friday card and you can use that card for anything, you know, going to purchase something. A lot of businesses are going cashless. Now on airplanes, if you want to buy even a coffee, you've got to do it through the app. It's got to be cashless. So you do need to have a card. So that that really helps that group. And even if you're underserved and you have some options, it just gives you more flexibility around your money because With the Daily Pay app by itself, 
you can choose where your money goes. So if you wanted to put it onto a debit card or into your sister's bank account, you can do that. So really it gives you, again, that, that transparency and flexibility to create the solutions that you need versus trying to follow a set of invisible rules that don't necessarily meet your lifestyle. Right, right. Well, how are you overcoming misconceptions about earned wage access programs? <laughs> it is a daily battle, my <laughs> friend, and, and it always tends to change. Before the pandemic, if people remember that far back, <laughs> the biggest misconception was, oh, if I give employees access to their pay as they earn it, they're going to take it all out and use it irresponsibly and you know spend it and then their traditional payday will come and they'll have a paycheck of $0 and a response to that used to be do your employees open up their bank account and go to the ATM every time they see money sitting in it and take it all out put their balance at 0 and go spend it irresponsibly some possibly but most of us do not and we know how to see a balance somewhere and and you know have self control to use it for the things that we need as soon as the pandemic hit though i think a lot of companies realized that an earn wage access solution like daily pay doesn't just help the employee it helps the entire household and during the pandemic when a lot of other people in the household's jobs were affected. Either they were furloughed, their job was eliminated, or their hours were just cut. It was the person that was working that had access to daily pay that might not need daily pay normally, but could use the money now to kind of bridge the household until people got situated and unemployment checks started coming in and people started to manage their life. So I think that really changed the perception. Today, I think. The misconceptions are it's going to be very difficult to implement and take a lot of resources. And, you know, we tell everybody it's seamless, it's fast, and you can probably reduce some of the planned hiring that you had because it's going to eliminate work. Of course, nobody wants to believe the company that's selling you anything. So instead, we just suggest that people call clients of ours, any of them, literally. We don't give you a list, just, you know, find out who's using daily pay, call Hilton, call. Dollar Tree, you know, call Target, call Kroger and ask them because they will tell you firsthand what the implementation was like and, and where the benefits are. So we love it when people are pleasantly surprised during a seamless implementation. But that's a big misconception. The other misconception that we hear all the time is this is going to be something that could cause compliance or taxation issues. And I think while the earn wage access industry is still new and you know the CFPB and other entities are still reviewing it and how to best look at it and what the regulatory statutes may be down the road, everybody in the industry is working really diligently to make sure that we stay as far away from being considered or tagged as predatory or a payday loan as possible. So we've got a, a lot of people on our side of daily pay and compliance and legal that, that keep us really up to speed with that. And so do the other companies that offer this type of service too. So it's, it's something that I encourage any legal or compliance officer to reach out and have a conversation with us about because we've answered a lot of questions over the years and are happy to share you know how it really works behind the scenes. Yeah, it's fascinating. In your normal day, you don't think about being paid every other week. Like that is just like what is ingrained in us. You know, it's just, it's so weird that you just don't think about that. And then when you learn that these things exist where it makes sense, right? I work today. I earned money today. Why don't I have access to the money that I earned today? Why does the company get to hold that for two weeks? You know, it's just crazy. It is crazy. And I think for... Those of us, I'm Gen X, you know, for anybody that's a baby boomer, that's Gen X, or even a lot of millennials are starting to turn 40, I feel like our generations kind of grew up. That's just the way life was. But for Gen Z that's in the employment market now and is a large sector of employees, they grew up getting everything on demand. They grew up with Uber, with Airbnb, with DoorDash. You know, they, they just, if they want it, it is there. They don't understand even how credit card statements work. Why do you have to wait 30 days before you get a bill? You know, why can't it be immediate? So I think 
there's a generational element where the expectation is, hey, everything else is on demand. Even at my work, everything is on demand. Why wouldn't my pay be too? And then, you know, you get some people who start to question, is it fair that a company holds on to my money for two weeks or a month or a week and gets to earn the interest off of that and hold on to it as profit while I don't get to use it? You know, so there's there's a lot of different thoughts behind it. And I, I think we're going to continue to see the employee just expecting this type of pay as we move forward. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, there are a lot of advances going on. And like you said, this space is not that old. And there's a lot of companies that are that are helping do positive things in this financial inclusion space. What do you think's next? What's next in this space? What more can we do, I guess, as a broader fintech payments industry? What more can we do to help with this kind of global challenge of financial inclusion? There's so much opportunity that's still untapped and in so many ways that we can look at making really creating really positive change for good in the financial technology space. I mean, I think you just need to pick an angle, right? If you look at that unbanked population, it's so huge. And you look into their lifestyle and how things could change if they had easier or earlier access to money, if they had more financial education. We focus a lot on the fact that financial education and training on how to do simple things like create a budget and understand what your expenses are, that needs to start when you're in school. And well, I had a class way back when in seventh or eighth grade that, about how to write a check so that you could pay somebody. A lot of education has cut that out. And that needs to be brought back in. So there's opportunities there. There's opportunities around just different segments of of workers and populations. When you get outside of the U.S. and you just look at you know the ways that the economy is running, there's tremendous opportunities there. You've got everything that's being looked at with crypto and all the different types of cryptocurrency possibilities. I read somewhere about a company that offers to pay you in crypto. And they did this study to see for those that are getting paid in crypto, it's really like gambling. You know, your paycheck could be $400 <laughs> or it could be $4,000 or it could be four. And the conclusion of the study said that basically, if you're going to do that, you have to live with your parents or someone else <laughs> that's paying the bill <laughs> because you're never sure how much you're going to make until you can have enough as a backup. But um, there's a lot of untapped untapped potential. And then when you get into things like bill pay, also completely untapped potential. Think about your typical recurring monthly bill. You know, in, in this case, my cable bill, it, just for internet, it's $90 a month at my house. And maybe I don't have, I haven't accrued $90 a month within a monthly time period because that's a lot of money. But what if every day I was putting $3 away and I could do micro payments that bring that bill down so that I'm never in a situation where a large sum of money is being asked of me that I don't have, but otherwise it's manageable. And when you think about that and the gig economy, I think there's opportunities there. Staffing in general, especially if you look at today's generation of workers that has a job, if it's an hourly job, they most likely have a side gig. Even a bunch of salary people have side gigs, but nothing's fluid. Everything runs off of multiple systems. There's just a a tremendous amount of opportunity. I'm really excited about the future for fintech and see the next five years is just a really innovative time. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Well, this has been a a fascinating conversation. I really appreciate you being on. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Well, in honor of Financial Inclusion Month, I would suggest if you're listening to this podcast, to go back, take a look at what your company is doing to support financial inclusion. And if you are in a B2B role or a B2B2C role, take a look at what you're doing for your vendors, your clients, and your partners, and see if there's some way that you can create change for good, like we do at Daily Pay. Yeah, I love that. Well, what would be the best way for people to learn more about Daily Pay? DailyPay.com, of course. Awesome. So Jeannie, thank you so much for being on the show today. I know your time's very valuable, so I want to appreciate that. So thank you so much. And again, it was an amazing discussion, really 
amazed at what Daily Pay is doing and, and the difference that you guys are making in, in everybody's lives. So thank you for, again, for being on the show. Thanks so much for having me on. And we really appreciate being part of this month of great content. Absolutely. And to all you listeners out there, I thank you for your time as well. And until the next story. Thank you for joining us this week on the Leaders in Payments podcast. Make sure you visit our website at leadersinpayments.com, where you can subscribe to the show and where you'll find our show notes. If you enjoyed listening, please share on your social channels as well. 